Thank you, Dr. Ferries. Uh, I've just made aware to me that I'm the only one keeping people from cocktails, so I apologize. I'll try and get through this as quickly as possible. Don't be hating. Um, so uh, dialysis maintenance, um, of note, I do consult for companies that manufacture uh, dialysis maintenance uh, technologies. Uh, very briefly, uh, the recent Kadoki guidelines, which looked at um, what tools and technology should be used for arteriovenous fistula uh, maintenance and arteriovenous graft maintenance, essentially demonstrated that there's inadequate evidence to recommend the use of any specialized balloons, either drug-coated or cutting balloons, for dialysis maintenance, essentially just something there's just not enough data, there hasn't been enough um, high-end trials. Um, the story of uh, drug-coated balloons for dialysis access uh, goes back 10 years. This original feasibility study was actually um, performed by uh, Katsanos, uh, believe it or not, um, in, Greek in, 2000, in, in Greece in 2012, uh, where he uh, first reported the use of DCBs for AV access. This was a retrospective feasibility study, but certainly demonstrated uh, a, a, a thought-provoking uh, concept. Uh, a meta-analysis uh, published uh, three years ago, right around the time of the Kadoki guidelines, um, essentially said that there was a significant improvement, but we needed large ongoing multi-center randomized controlled trials to further clarify uh, the potential benefit of these devices in uh, ESRD uh, populations. Uh, and then I was uh, lucky and honored to participate in the IMPACT AV trial, uh, which was published in late 2020, uh, which was the first positive randomized trial looking at the role of DCB for dialysis uh, fistula maintenance. This was published in the New England Journal of Medicine. Uh, these were the six-month results demonstrate clear superiority for target lesion primary patency as well as access circuit uh, primary patency. Um, a subsequent meta-analysis uh, published in uh, both Journal of Vascular Surgery and European Journal of Vascular and Endovascular Surgery, um, clearly uh, demonstrated that uh, DCBs are superior to plain balloon angioplasty with improved six-month failure rate. Um, however, they cautioned against the use of DCB preferentially because the long-term data uh, requires further investigation. So in uh, uh, the fall of, sorry, in the spring of 2021 at Charing Cross, uh, the two-year data was publicly uh, presented demonstrating persistence of clinical benefit, uh, again, favoring the impact AV access balloon, uh, again, a st statistically significant improvement in target lesion primary patency, as well as access circuit primary patency. The 12-month results have been subsequently published earlier this year in Journal of Vascular and Interventional Radiology. Um, and so we are on the verge of demonstrating you know, clear superiority of this technology in terms of uh, long-term clinical benefit. Uh, I'm going to shift gears just a little bit so this isn't a, a full advertisement for DCBs to talk about covered stents because I think that's the other uh, technology that is more, um, more, more prevalent uh, for dialysis uh, maintenance. Um, another meta-analysis uh, published in British Medical Journal looking at covered stents, um, this uh, uh, a Fox chart. Uh, demonstrates um, a preference towards covered stents, towards target lesion primary patency, access circuit primary patency, um, out to 12, uh, sorry, out to six and 12 months. Um, uh, the, when you get out uh, past 12 months, the uh, results become dampened and it's difficult to demonstrate clear superiority. Um, and certainly out to 24 months, there is a, a lack of clinical benefit. So the long-term data for covered stents doesn't appear to um, offer significant improvement, uh, which may be a deficit for permanent implants in uh, dialysis fistula circuits or dialysis graft circuits as compared to uh, drug-coated balloons. This is the most recent introduction. This is the Covera uh, covered vascular graft. Uh, this is the recent publication of this uh, multi-center uh, prospective trial, the, uh, the Aviva trial uh, published in uh, JVIR, um, which demonstrated you know, quite respect to patency, 54% um, for covered stents, most prominently in the venous outflow circuit out to uh, 12 months, uh, and then 37% out to uh, 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 two years. Um, so uh, again, in a great introduction or a great addition to our armamentarium for dialysis maintenance. Um, but now that we have a three-year data, 
uh, for impact AV, uh, we actually see superiority uh, as compared to that data I just showed you with 43% primary patency for the target lesion out to 36 months. Um, this three-year data is now in peer review um, and will hopefully be published uh, either later this year or uh, early uh, next year. The three-year data also corresponds to a 21% reduction in the reintervention rate with a preferential upfront use of drug-coated balloons for uh, dialysis fistula maintenance. I tried to sort of summarize all the data here for dialysis maintenance and, again, keep us on, on time and get us out to the complication session. Um, if you look at the data I just shared with you, this is the six-month and 12-month data for the impact AV uh, drug-coated balloon for uh, fistula maintenance, and, and I'll just direct your attention to the 65% uh, target lesion primary patency at 12 months. Uh, this is the um, other uh, drug-coated balloon, which is uh, which has FDA labeling for um, AV fistula maintenance. Uh, we have uh, primary, sorry, target lesion primary patency of 45% at 12 months. Um, if you shift over to bare metal stents, which unfortunately is still the dominant um, uh, North American method of maintenance of dialysis fistulas and dialysis grafts, the patency is absolutely abysmal. Um, and if there's one message I'll give you um, this afternoon is you should not be using bare metal stents in uh, dialysis uh, access circuits. They do not fare well, uh, and uh, it's really a, a disservice to your, to your, to your patients. Uh, pivoting over to uh, covered stents, and again, this is the data I just shared with you um, from uh, the uh, uh, Aviva trial. Um, you have 57.5% primary patency at 12 months for uh, covered stents. And so I, I think really the leaders are impact AV and the Covera covered stent. Um, and it's obviously up to you based on the patient's criteria, uh, anatomic considerations on which you think is um, uh, best suited, whether a, a sort of temporary um, uh, uh, solution uh, in the form of a drug-coated balloon or a permanent implant in terms of a, a covered stent for dialysis maintenance. So uh, DCBs are of uh, great interest. There are numerous other uh, manufacturers that are making significant investments in the technology given the global epidemic of end-stage renal disease and the obvious um, uh, recognition that uh, uh, dialysis fistulas and dialysis fistula maintenances uh, are increasing in numbers across the entire world. Um, there's uh, an interest in demonstrating the long-term safety of this technology, perhaps out to five years, um, and expanding the uh, cohorts that will be studied to other uh, arteriovenous fistula types, longer lesions, central lesions, um, and other types of uh, dialysis access circuits. Um, we clearly need to study a, a broader segment of the population to demonstrate its efficacy and applicability uh, to the uh, global population that we serve. Um, obviously, the introduction of sirolimus drug-coated balloons is of great interest to uh, most um, uh, 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 practitioners that work in this space. Um, there are a number of other uh, trials that are either in the planning stage or are currently enrolling, and we uh, look forward to seeing much more data in the years ahead. Thank you for your attention. I hope I did that on time.